Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. Here we're going to talk about Chapter 6, and it's all about chemical reactions. Before we talk about chemical reactions, let's define an aqueous solution. An aqueous solution is a solution in which water is the dissolving medium. So if I dissolve sodium chloride in water, I have an aqueous solution. The sodium chloride is dissolved in the water. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Homogeneous meaning uniform throughout. The solvent is a substance usually present in greater quantity. In our sodium chloride solution, the water would be the solvent. The solute or solutes are the other substances which are dissolved in the solvent. In our example, the sodium chloride is the solute. Now, when molecular compounds are dissolved in water, many of them maintain their structural integrity. In other words, they don't dissociate. Ethanol is an example of that. Some molecules will interact so strongly with water that they are pulled apart and they form ions. One example is hydrogen chloride. When hydrogen chloride gas is dissolved in water, it ionizes to form hydrochloric acid. So we would refer to a molecule like ethanol as a non-electrolyte. It does not dissociate into charged particles. Hydrogen chloride gas we would refer to as a strong electrolyte in water because it completely dissociates into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Let's take a look at some strong and weak electrolytes. Again, electrolyte is going to refer to the ions that are in solution. A lot of molecular compounds are not electrolytes. They are non-electrolytes because they don't dissociate into ions. Strong electrolytes are things like strong acids and ionic compounds that do dissolve in water. When dissolved, they completely dissociate into ions. Weak electrolytes, on the other hand, do not completely dissociate. They will only partially dissociate into ions or partially ionize. Some examples are weak acids and weak bases. The first type of reaction we're going to talk about is a double replacement reaction or metathesis reaction. So basically what you have is an exchange of positive and negative ions. Note here we have AX plus BY. Note that in the products, the B has been replaced by A and the A has been replaced by B. One example of one of these metathesis reactions would be a precipitation reaction. This is a double replacement reaction that results in the formation of an insoluble product, the precipitate. Here we have potassium iodide and lead nitrate which react to form solid lead iodide, which is a bright yellow, and potassium nitrate. Note what's happened here. Note that the lead replaces the potassium ion, and we end up with lead iodide, and the potassium replaces the lead, and we end up with potassium nitrate. The solubility of a substance is the amount of substance that can be dissolved in a given quantity of water at 25 degrees Celsius. So for example, sodium chloride. I can dissolve 36 grams of sodium chloride into 100 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius. If I were to try to dissolve any more than that, it's not going to dissolve. So there's a limit to the solubility of an ionic compound. Any substance that has a solubility of less than one gram per 100 milliliters of water is considered insoluble in water. So again, back to our equation. Notice the formation of our insoluble product, the lead iodide. Now, we're going to learn how to predict these types of reactions. Before we do, we have to remember that ionic compounds exist as crystal lattices. The sodium ions and chloride ions are very ordered. They're arranged in a crystal lattice. So how do the ions maintain their positions 
by the electrostatic attractions between the positive and the negative ions. We call those ionic bonds. It would take a lot of heat to disrupt ionic bonds. Recall the melting point of sodium chloride is about 800 degrees Celsius. So it really takes a lot of energy to disrupt these ionic attractions. Now, let's take a look at water. Recall that water is a polar molecule. And we already talked about the oxygen being much more electronegative than the hydrogen. So the region of the molecule that contains the oxygen is electron rich and has a partial negative charge. The region that contains the hydrogens you can think of as being electron poor because those electrons are being pulled towards the oxygen and they have a partial positive charge. We call molecules like water dipolar. Now, when we dissolve sodium chloride in water, what will happen is the positive dipoles of the water molecules will be attracted to the negative chloride ions. And the negative dipole of the water molecule will be attracted to the positive sodium ions. So you can think of the water molecule as pulling the positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chloride ions into solution. What happens is the ions become surrounded by water molecules. Each individual ion becomes surrounded. We call this hydration. For example, the sodium ion, when fully hydrated, will have six water molecules associated with it. Here we just show four, but imagine, if you will, another water molecule directly above the sodium and another one directly behind it, and that would complete the hydration of one sodium ion. Now, not all ionic compounds are soluble in water. The ionic compounds that do dissolve in water are more stable when hydrated with water than they are in their crystal lattice. But we also have many ionic compounds that are more stable in their crystal lattice than when they're hydrated with water. Some examples of these insoluble compounds are silver chloride, lead 2 iodide, and barium sulfate. We have to memorize the solubility rules. Your soluble ionic compounds include all compounds that contain nitrate ion, lithium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium ions. Most compounds that contain chloride, bromide, and iodide ions are soluble, with the exceptions of silver, lead 2, and mercury. Most compounds that contain sulfate ion are soluble, with these exceptions here, calcium, strontium, barium, silver, and lead 2 sulfates. The insoluble ionic compounds, most compounds that contain hydroxide ions, are insoluble, with the exception of compounds that contain lithium, potassium, sodium, ammonium, and barium ions. Most compounds that contain carbonate, phosphate, sulfite, and sulfite ions are insoluble. Major exceptions are those that contain lithium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium ions. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at these compounds and determine if they're soluble or insoluble. Potassium carbonate is soluble. All potassium compounds are. Barium phosphate is insoluble because most compounds that contain phosphate are insoluble. And I don't see barium here as an exception. Ammonium hydroxide is soluble. All ammonium compounds are soluble. Calcium sulfite is insoluble. Sulfites are insoluble, and I don't see calcium on the exception list. Let's take a look at strontium sulfate. Strontium sulfate is insoluble because sulfates are soluble, but strontium sulfate is an exception. Silver bromide is insoluble because bromides are soluble, but silver bromide is an exception.
Potassium bromide is soluble. All potassium compounds are soluble. And ammonium nitrate is also soluble. All ammonium and nitrate compounds are soluble. So let's take a look at how we would actually be able to determine if the precipitate is formed. Here we have an equation between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide to produce water and sodium chloride. Now this is our overall equation, sometimes called the molecular equation, because it shows the substances as being undissociated. But we know that hydrochloric acid is in water as hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And sodium hydroxide is soluble, so it would be in solution as sodium and hydroxide ions. And then, of course, water is water, right? It's molecular. It doesn't dissociate. And sodium chloride is also dissociated as sodium and chloride ions. So what we can do is we can write a net ionic equation, which just shows us the ions that participate in the formation of the product. In this case, it's hydrogen ion, hydroxide ion to produce water. The chloride and the sodium ions are called spectator ions. They do not participate in the formation of the product. Note that these ions are on both sides of the equation and therefore cancel out. Let's go ahead and try out a problem. Here we're told that a solution of silver nitrate is mixed with a solution of potassium iodide. We need to write an overall equation or molecular equation, the net ionic equation, the ionic equation, and identify the spectator ions. Okay, well, let's start with what we're given. We're told that aqueous solutions of silver nitrate and potassium iodide are mixed. So I'm going to go ahead and start writing out the overall equation. So we have silver nitrate, and you're going to need to know the formulas for these substances. And we have potassium iodide. So we want to know what will be the product. Now, the first thing I need to do is, we we're told that these were in solution, so both of these are aqueous. And even if you check your solubility rules, you'll see that both compounds are soluble. So now what I do is I exchange the ions. So I replace the silver ion here with potassium, and we end up with potassium nitrate. And here, I'll replace the potassium with the silver and we end up with silver iodide. So, potassium nitrate is soluble, because all nitrates are soluble, so that's aqueous. And of course, silver iodide is not soluble. If we look up here at the table, we see that most compounds containing iodide ion are soluble, with some exceptions. And one of those is silver iodide. So this will get a label of a solid. So when you mix these two solutions together, you form a precipitate of silver iodide. Now we're ready to write the ionic equation. So silver nitrate is in solution as silver ions plus nitrate ions. Also, before this step, make sure that your equation is balanced and all formulas are written correctly. Potassium iodide is also in solution as potassium ions and iodide ions. And then potassium nitrate is soluble, so we're going to have potassium ions plus nitrate ions. And of course, silver iodide is insoluble, so we have to keep that as a solid. So now we're ready for our net ionic equation, and we note that nitrate ions cancel and potassium ions cancel out because we have them on both sides. So then our net ionic equation would be silver ion plus iodide ion to produce solid silver iodide. So the reaction is actually only between the silver and the iodide ions. And of course, our spectator ions are the potassium ions and nitrate ions.